for me that I've disappointed more times. <laughs> <You're> uh, <enough>. <laughs> so, um, well, I already know the answer to this for the game. Why did you write the book? Why did you write the, the first book, which was uh, Married Man and you said it. Okay, know. so The Adventures of a Recovering Sex Addict, Volume 1, Married Men and Fuck Boys. Yeah. And I wrote this book while I was trying to write my biography, which I've been trying to write forever. And it just... That's a hard thing to write, eh? I, I thought to, about it, but it's like, well, you come, and where you do also, I start? You also don't <laughs> want to blow up the spot of other people. And so it was that that made me start to say, let me create a character that is based off of me, that is safer to put in... Because even, there was, this is very conscious to make her animated. Mm -hmm. because society in general doesn't really care that much about black women. At least I don't feel cared for by, black, um, by, by my society that I live in. However, uh, a character of myself is a lot more accepted than me. So people think that they know me. Oh, that's L.A. You, you excuse it away thinking you already know. Mm -hmm. But when you see her, you're, you're actually more curious. Mm -hmm. Um, her being naked on the cover has a lot to do with the way that I write. I'm very naked in that way I speak, in the way that I write. Um, You're blunt. Yeah, I'm blunt, but I also have like a style about me yeah. that is very conversational. Mm -hmm. And so the book is very conversational. And people talk about when they read the book, they're like, go through it so fast because, you know, it's, it's like they're having a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. She's looking back because I learned very early on that while women are constantly looked at as objects, we're also subjects and that we have something to also offer. So her looking back is looking back at the people looking at her. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a much deeper thing than people realize. Uh, I call my genre of books self-help erotica because of course you need the guilty pleasure. People <laughs> want to hear about the sex and all of those things and so I give them what they need. Yeah, she do be doing a little bit of kiss and tell in there, but, <laughs> but the names are, uh, you know, you, man, them don't, don't get, Scared. Yeah, no, no. And no. every person that I write about, I tell them. Yeah. Okay. I tell them that I'm writing about them. You got to give them a card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I even like, ask yeah. them, what, what do you want your name to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You know? That's really cool, yo. Yeah. That's really cool. But also, like. Call me Magic Johnson. Yes, and I will. And I will. <laughs> I'll call you Magic Johnson, and then as a writer who has a great imagination, I can create a whole world around the idea of, of a magic genre. There's a, there's a guy in the, in the book in there who I just met. I didn't really even have an ongoing thing with him, but I met him. But um, he reminded me of this kind of like, I don't know, someone from a magazine. So I was like, you remind me of James Bond. <laughs> and so I called him Mr. Bond. He's like, mm. I'm like, can I write about you? And it's all embellished. Not all. Like, I met him and I thought he was hot mm -hmm. or whatever. But the, the storylines are like, you're still trying to tell a story. No, you got to make it, you know, polish it up a little, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and then yeah. that allows me to, to tell, get it out of me while being, you know, imaginative. And, yeah, yeah and making sure that they're safe as well. Yeah, the second book is a little bit more raw. Okay, what's that one? What's that one called? This one's called uh, The Adventures of Recovering Sex Addict, Volume 2. Friends with benefits, but mostly liabilities. <laughs> and that's because we can convince ourselves that, you know, we can do whatever with a friend and then it's going to be all good. But almost always, there's a liability. So at the back of the book, I create a SWOT analysis. There's literally a SWOT analysis where if you do investing, you know that a SWOT requires you to check out the investment to see if it's worthy. So you look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. And if you do the same thing with your friendships, you'll be able to see who's in it for real and who you might want to like just sell and get out of your life. And, and you know that that's that's you just being practical. I'm just being practical because with trauma, but, but you can't but always we're tell. But we humans, you know what I mean? We do humans. Yeah. You're just being practical, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you know, you have a certain amount of your people. People equate their time and money. It's the same thing, like. Why would you waste your time? You're not going to waste money. Most people don't even want to waste their money. Why would you want to waste your time? So might as well find out what you're getting into before you start yeah. putting that effort and yeah. time into it. And when you mm -hmm. really check for it, you know, there's a lot of people that you think up front that, oh, that you would never continue a friendship with them. But with our trauma, we're, we're, we're always, we're not really clear on what we're seeing. So understanding what's really going on by putting it down on paper or thinking through it more thoroughly you might realize that, you know, what you're afraid of is something that you actually need to embrace. How does your past impact your present dating life? 
Well, I only just recently met someone who... Um, He's right there. Hi. I'm not going to blow up the spot. You guys can't see him, but I can see he's right there. Look at my eyes. Maybe you can see his face. Stop the madness. He, he's, um, so I was single for seven years. You know, I, 2016, I, I got separated and I've dated. I've tried to go on dates, but I, there's nobody that my children have ever met to say, this is my boyfriend. So they never knew. Well, you learned from when you were five oh, what well, your dad yeah. was do, doing. You're yeah. not going to be putting your children yeah. through that. And I'm, I'm big about that. So that's a. That's and a you big know how deal. the man mold their mom sacred, yo. Well, yeah. Even you know the ones I mean? that treat them bad, they yeah. hold them sacred. Well, <laughs> it's crazy. It's listen, crazy. that's a whole other conversation because I have a lot to say to, to black women, black mothers that don't treat their, their children well. That is a whole other story, yeah. and and I'm I understand that I'm hated for a lot of the things that I put out there. They don't know how to handle my truth mm -hmm. um, because it's their truth. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're not they're not no, ready no, yet they're, to they're look at keep that. Swept under, the, under the rug. Exactly. But that's good. That's what, like when you, when you walk with a certain light, certain people who want to be in the dark just have to stay away from you. you just you stay there. Whenever you're ready to come to the light. I'm here shining. <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about? See, now I'm having the weeds thought. No, no. What happened? You, you know, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You talk about dating your children. And yes, yes. Them. So not having somebody for so long. And then um, after my screening, um, I went on a date. The first date was just like the bomb. We went to Ikea. And we sat in one of the bedrooms. No. Oh, I thought <laughs> you went to, the, I went to I thought you went to go eat at IKEA. No, well, we were gonna go have cake somewhere else. Okay. And then he he lived close to an IKEA, so we went to the IKEA instead because I didn't want to drive too far. And um, we went into one of the living rooms, not one of the bedrooms. We went into the living room, and we sat there like it was fully our spot. And we sat there and cock up foot on everything and had this whole <laughs> you guys got comfortable. <laughs> People were coming in like <laughs> saying like, excuse me, can I just see the price of this? But, like, <laughs> but we're just yeah, in there, in the right? Moment. Yeah. And we talked until that place shut down. They turned off the lights and then workers were walking by like, oh, you guys, you guys have to leave. So it was just one of those moments where we didn't realize we were just sitting there talking for so long. Mm -hmm. And the energy was so synergistic. And... We're at the same place in our lives. And that makes a big difference. Timing is huge for when you're ready to have a relationship, a good relationship. And so, you know, he had been single for a year. I've been single for seven years. Um, and we both are at a place where we just kind of know ourselves, know what we want. And he, he works in the industry as well and so I see a lot of collaboration coming where I can I've always wanted to work with my partner um, that love can go back and forth and I'm able to share I knew that I could t introduce him to my children when we could have disagreement and yes you can have it's important to have disagreement don't run from disagreement because you don't know how that person is until you disagree with them and that's how relationship goes just like going to the gym you, know, you need that resistance yeah, you need the resistance, but respectful. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. it's not disrespectful. It's honorable, and we've just made well, a if commitment. The person means something to you. You want, you want that respect to be distant. Yeah, you know I mean? and I wasn't sure if I was ready, but as the weeks, the the a good month went by with this person, and, and like I said, I'm older, and he's older. And you were so, transparent about your back, where yeah. I'm, all that stuff. Yeah, and, and, and there's just you, when you when, I know it's cliche too. When you know, you just know. I feel completely safe with this person. This person nurtures me. He 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 matches that that thing that I said that a, a husband would want to. He's not my husband yet mm -hmm. or ever. I don't know. Well, we walk like we're partnering. It's, it, like it's not it's not it's not your competition. He's is not it, my competition. It, it, we want to see each other win. It's somebody you're compatible. Very much so, and so it's a love that I didn't know existed. It's a love that. Um, I'm just really grateful for because when you've been through this shit and you get here, you can't help but just be grateful. I don't need to pop off and show off and I'm just like quiet love is so beautiful. What I'm experiencing behind the scenes right now is ours and if we're going to tell our story, it's not I'm not going to tell his story. We will tell our story. Still right? water runs deep. Still water yeah, runs deep. It's beautiful. The, we're, you're very transparent. Did you have any apprehension about uh, about your past in regards to your boys 
Not yeah, my, my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I have to be I I have to be honest with them because um, I want them to be. Honest.